everything we learned from the City loss to Spurs in the League Cup 2-1 to Ange Posacoglu in North London. Obviously, City crash out of the League Cup, which has been a reoccurring theme for a few years. Look, City won four in a row. Uh, it was Guardiola's first trophy. Aguero scored against Arsenal, chipped the keeper many, many years ago. You do feel the context of where football is at the moment has changed uh, significantly, particularly with Guardiola. I think the competition has always been important to me. City are one of the most successful sides in the League Cup. I think it does matter. I'm not going to say it's like the Community Shield or the Audi Cup. It does matter to me a lot, the League Cup. And there have been some great moments as a City fan watching the League Cup. But you do feel in the, in the last couple of years, particularly that the narrative around the Club World Cup next summer uh, and a few other things in terms of uh, in terms of World Cups and kind of lengths of, uh, of injuries, the amount of injuries that people are getting, that I think Guardiola particularly is absolutely not fussed about the League Cup. And I'm not just saying that about City losing. It's just that I think if you're going to lose, you want to lose early. The last thing you want to do is get to the semi-finals final and lose particularly if, if that kind of February, March time, there are injuries as well, which there clearly are. This is what we learn about Man City. And there are some major, major problems with squad depth at the moment. Uh, can't blame anyone in terms of the business side of the operation. It's, it's just an injury thing because when City have got a full strength squad, you know, City aren't losing that game to Spurs. Let's be completely real. Savinho injured in the game. Gavardio might have a knock. Uh, De Bruyne obviously didn't feature in the game. Rodri, of course, out for a long time. Best player in the world now. I can say that officially. Ruben Diaz has a knock. Carl Walker has a knock. And you never know about the likes of Ake. You never know about the likes of John Stones, their ability to play week in, week out. So the, the first thing we learn is that City squad at the moment is vulnerable. And it remains to be seen if the likes of Bournemouth can, uh, and Brighton can take points off City and give Arsenal and, and Liverpool an opportunity in the Premier League title race. Uh, the issue is that, if you're a rival fan, the issue is that City don't have really a tough game until the 1st of December where Liverpool uh, come into full force. Another injury I didn't mention is Carl Walker as well because Carl Walker is massively, massively missed in this City side. Uh, ultimately, Rico Lewis was getting absolutely destroyed on the outside. Uh, the ball's around the corner for Timo Werner. Timo Werner looked like... I mean, Timo Werner looked like prime Frank Ribery. I mean, it was absolutely outrageous. Uh, and that's not to blame Rico Lewis. I think he does everything right off the ball. I think positioning is very smart. Uh, I think he holds a line very well. I think he's decent in the tackle for how diminutive he is. And on the ball, he gives you so much more than Carl Walker in terms of just calmness, possession. But there is a thing that I've noticed, I've noticed now, and, and Rico Lewis's pure physicality, his, his kind of pure athleticism, isn't quite there yet and we, we can debate if it needs to be because not everyone can be Carl Walker not everyone can be this kind of cheat code this get out of free jail card in terms of uh, a ball getting played over the top and Carl Walker's keeping up pace with everyone I mean I remember the moment when Vinicius broke through uh, a couple of years ago and he makes up five ten yards on Vinicius who's probably one of the quickest wingers in world football in the last 10 years. So that get out of uh, a jail free card is kind of gone now. Obviously, Carl Walker's form has been poor. He's got injuries and he's obviously right at the end of his, his prime years with all due respect to him. But Rico Lewis, that is one thing we learn. I think that uh, I think if you can get the ball high into City's half and you can have a little bit of space on the half turn, you can play that ball around Rico Lewis. You can play it over the top of Rico Lewis. I think you'll, you can find some joy. And I think City have to find a way of protecting Rico Lewis a little bit more because... Uh, if you're playing Rico Lewis and Savinho, I think there's a lack of protection there sometimes, particularly without Rodri, because obviously Rodri is the glue. Rodri brings everything together. Um, and you're just going to have a very small, a lacking in height, you know, right hand side where, you know, before it used to be Bernardo Silva and Carl Walker. You know, Bernardo Silva was small, but he used to work hard, press from the front. There would be no space to attack Carl Walker, really, in prime city years. Let's be completely real. Even Riyad Mahrez. And now it's just a little bit youngish. It's a, it's a little bit small and diminutive, the right-hand side for Man City. And there will be some joy there. The second thing we learn is that um, if, you can, if you can fire a ball quick into midfield and you can get a, a first-time touch around a City player, you are going to have 30 yards of space. It's absolutely mental. We saw it against Prague. We saw it against Southampton on the other side. We saw it against Ipswich. We saw it against Brentford. We've seen it multiple times. Well, I think we've probably seen it 
every game this season. At some point, that ball can get fired right down the channel. Someone can flick it in midfield first time, beat in the first line of defence in midfield, the first defence in midfielder, whoever it is. If it's Phil Foden covering that side, Kovacic, whoever, even Rico Lewis, when he's played in midfield at points this season, uh, you can find a lot of joy. And against top sides, again, I mentioned the Liverpool game coming up at the 1st of December. That's not far away. It's only a couple of weeks away because you take away a week or so, 10 days because of the international break. In terms of City form going into that game, Liverpool could really find a lot of joy in, in the game. All you have to do to bypass the City midfield at the moment is fire that ball down the line. It gets flipped into midfield, almost like a one-two around the corner, and bang, you've got so much space to play another ball across the pitch, to run with the ball. Um, and, and a large part of that, look, it's always going to come back to Rodri. He is the best defensive midfielder in the world. It's like if that Conte's Chelsea side, if it's like that Ranieri's Leicester City side didn't have Kante. I think he's similar levels of uh, of distance cover covered than Kante. He's that athletic, Rodri. The, the other issue is I think everyone else on the side isn't pressing as hard. We can debate uh, hunger. If, if the City side wins four Premier League titles in a row and a treble in that four-year period, hunger is not going to be exactly the same. I think Guardiola's genius is that he does he does still keep people hungry even when they're achieving 10 out of 10 things in their career. I look at Mateus Nunes, who had a decent game, obviously scored a goal. He's in a little bit of form himself. And you look at Mateus Nunes and you think... He's come in for big money, would have been bitterly disappointed with the la with last season, with the lack of appearances. He looks hungry. He he he's working hard. Um the issue is for someone like Nunes is that he positionally isn't isn't world class, links the ball, uh, links up links up play very well, gets on the ball, you know, nice. He's a cute footballer and he's he's scoring a couple of goals for City, and it's nice to see. Well, you know, I count one in the Champions League, which was a, a penalty. But um the the issue with Mateus Nunes is, is he's not up to speed because of last season and the the amount of space that Saar had to score the uh, the second goal for Spurs it was actually embarrassing it was actually un Guardiola like because whatever you say about Guardiola's quality on the ball uh, getting City um, uh, to have a massive amount of possession which City did actually have against Spurs uh, yesterday I think it's about seventy percent possession which is ridiculous uh, 65 70 percent possession the space is it was embarrassing. It was actually embarrassing. At, at times, Spurs had so many chances with spaces ahead of the back four. You could have prime Maldini. If there's that much space for Sar to shoot, a prime Buffon isn't saving uh, the Sar goal. It was a beautifully well-taken goal. Um, and the issue is, again, Nunes was uh, the closest player to it. You just don't have defensively sound midfielders currently in that side. Ilkay Gundogan, Bernardo Silva. You feel that they were always improved with Fernandinho kicking about, uh, improved with Vincent Company many, many years ago, uh, just behind them. This back four feels a bit vulnerable. The midfield feels a little bit uh, low energy, low intensity off the ball. And that there will be question marks about that going into the, the Premier League games. Let's talk about it because Bournemouth come up. I think you'd be absolutely crazy not to look at Bournemouth as having at least a chance of getting a point in this game. Haaland obviously comes back into the fold. A few other big names come back in, but not many. I mean, Savinho looks like he's out. I mean, I don't know. There, there might be a role for James McAtee in the side, who I, I, I fancy a lot. I like the guy a lot. He's fantastic. But Bo this Bournemouth side, if they get a few passages of play, they can beat anyone. They were very good against Chelsea. They were unlucky to to not get something out of the game. They really They started off slow. And then you look at what they did against Arsenal. It was fantastic. Huge result. One of the best results in their recent history, Bournemouth. And they're in they're in fine form. And that ball around the corner, Semenya, I'm not sure if he's 100% available to play. If he is, Semenya's going to get a lot of space if City aren't careful. And he he's the kind of guy that could definitely nick a couple of goals. This could be a big banana skin for City. And, and City have to work on the pressing through midfield. I think being a little bit smarter on the ball and, and being a little bit more cautious, trying to keep the ball, because keeping the ball is a remedy for having these kind of gaping holes defensively. And then the, I think I just want to see a little bit more energy in midfield. That's the one criticism for me. More energy in midfield, more intensity in midfield. It's not easy with pers with the personnel changes, with Rodri not being there, De Bruyne being, especially in his late uh, mid-30s now. But that's the one thing for me. I think if City can just keep the ball a little bit better, give Haaland a couple of chances against Bournemouth, um, I think I think it would be okay. But there is a massive opportunity there. And there is a massive opportunity if Arsenal and Liverpool keep winning, unfortunately. Lisbon in the Cup, that's not, a, you know, that's, uh, in the Champions League, that's not bad. Brighton away, that's difficult. Brighton are in unbelievable form. They're unbelievable, Brighton. Um, and then you've got Spurs again at, at the Etihad. I mean, that is a tricky run of fixtures with the amount of injuries. 
with Liverpool on the horizon as well. So look, no, no City fans going to sit there and cry about the League Cup. It's not nice to lose to Spurs. Spurs always get these kind of banana skin results against City, of course. But it does allude to bigger opportunities there in the kind of... Uh, it does allude to bigger opportunities there for other sides. Um, when we talk about Man City in the Premier League Tart race and even the Champions League. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you've made it this far, please subscribe. It would be uh, great to have you on board. And I'll see you very, very soon.